everybody and welcome to this video where we are going to talk about stuff that is going to make people angry because that's what happens and especially when you talk poetry i don't know if poets have much other things to do than to get mad about shit so we will talk about that um real quick just so you guys know today tonight monday night free poetic anarchy crash course look at all this stuff Trust your pen, find your voice, write a therapy, not fear poetry, be more productive, believe in yourself, and be freaking awesome, oh my gosh. You have to go to simslibraryofpoetry.org slash events. Um, I don't know when they, how many people they cap it at, but there's already 25 people signed up for this thing, okay? And this is going to be a really fun, crazy crash course. It's free, it's only an hour, and all that's going to happen to you is you're going to better yourself and learn a lot. So, um, I think you have the time. So, go ahead and do it. It's not going to cost you a goddamn fucking thing. So, darling. Um, this is what we're going to be talking about today. A wise poet, allegedly, said one time, First thought, best thought, is bullshit. I'm paraphrasing now, obviously. I don't think poets walk around saying bullshit all the time. But first thought, best thought is bullshit because your first thought is always a cliche. When I heard that, I got mad and I said, bull fucking shit. And I fucking wrote a poem about it and I'm going to read it to you. Here it goes. Okay, so this is a really long poem. Um, actually, I didn't think it was going to be that long, but now I have found it, and it is quite lengthy. So I wrote an angry poem in response to this guy saying this. So in my poem, the poem is called First, by the way, but um, in this poem I said, a bad poet once said, your first thought is always cliche. That's bullshit. If your first thought is cliche, then you're full of self-doubt and are worried what people think. You are not an artist and you should sell insurance. That is that awesome way to tell somebody what's what. And so I was thinking about it a little bit more. And some things came up in my thoughts here. One, realizing that free verse poetry is the most popular form of poetry in the world right now. It is also bringing in the most money to publishers than any kind of um, poetic form. So it's super fucking popular. And it's not popular because of the academics, okay? And the formalists and the new formalists and the new, new formulists, formalists and the new, new, new formalists. Um, and the retro formalists and whatever the fuck else there is. They're, they're not the ones making poetry popular. They're not the ones bringing in a shit ton of money with poetry. In fact, they are doing the exact opposite. They, are, they have been destroying poetry for decades, making it complicated and making people feel like it's inapproachable and that they will not be able to understand it and there's no entry level. There's no nothing. But these other poets who mainly Instagram poets, Insta poets, people of that ilk um, have been doing well with poetry and have been killing it and um, really don't give a fuck what the formalists think. And I was thinking about this and I was like, I wonder why this is. And something came into my head here. Obviously, poets and academics do not want you to write in cliché because clichés are bad. People can see them coming a mile away, the whole thing. We've heard it before, blah, 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 blah. Well, if we take this whole thing and realize that, according to the great book of Ecclesiastes, there is nothing new under the sun. Everything that is going to be done has been done. It's whatever. It's done. It's done. Okay. There's nothing to it. With that being said, every single thought anyone can ever have is a cliche. And I don't know about you, but I think Ecclesiastes was written a fuck of a long time ago. Okay. But then I was thinking about it 
And if a academic or a poet doesn't want there to be cliches in the things that they do, that also means that they're assuming their audience has heard every cliche out there. So that also means that they are assuming that the readers of their work are people who read poetry all the time. And they are assuming that new people coming in are not going to be coming in. They aren't worried about new people coming in, okay? Because the people who aren't worried about that, who are the people doing free verse, the people who are popular writing poetry, the people who are making money writing poetry, write whatever the fuck they want, whether it's a cliche or not. And you know what's happening? They're growing their reader base. More people like poetry now than ever before. And a lot of it, too, might be because they get these really um, overused cliches. But every cliche has to be heard by someone for the first time. And I don't think Instapoets are doing this purposefully. I don't think like they put this much thought into it. But a lot of these tired old cliches, a lot of younger people have never heard so when they hear it for the first time from Rupi, whatever her name is, that's going to blow their fucking mind. And they're going to be like, fuck, this chick is a goddamn philosopher and a fucking prophet. Okay? And the only reason why this is happening and her audience is growing and she could drop little what you think are watered down white bread cliches and have them stick with people is because she's either too smart or too stupid to realize that it doesn't matter and that you could reuse cliches all you fucking want, especially if you're growing an audience and reaching new readers. But honestly, if you just want the same 20 or 30, I don't want to just start generalizing. You know what I'm saying. If you don't want to grow your audience and you want the same 10 readers to read your book that comes out every 15 years, then knock yourself out and don't write in cliches, you know. I hope that um, giant pedestal you stand on is nice and lovely and that the weather is nice up there and that the wind doesn't get too hard and blow you off so you fall and break your fucking ass open, you stupid fuck. Anyway, use cliches, everybody. Expand your audience. Make poetry more popular today than it was yesterday. That's your fucking goal. So um, keep buying my books. Los Angeles, Poems About LA, um, Preview of a Dangerous Mind, Short Stories, um, my Etsy shop down below. Or you can go to Amazon and pick up a couple of my books. Poetry stuff, yeah. And, um, yeah, whatever. Keep buying my books. Fucking type hard. Use more cliches. Fuck everybody, dude. I'm done. I'm pissed now. Fuck you guys. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.